Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're back on the main account again with some more progress for you. Now over the last couple of weeks I have been really working on uh, questing and diary requirements because it's something I could do without a lot of money and they provide a ton of really useful benefits. For example the Fremenic Diary gives you some new spells, the Kandarin Diary gives you a much better agility training method, the Ardune Diary speeds up your farm runs, like it's just a lot of useful stuff. And on top of that, I've finally started doing the Chambers of Zarek, and I'm having an absolute blast doing it. Uh, so normally I have a kind of set finished goal for the episode, but today I'm going to be laying the groundwork for a few major goals that I should be able to hit very soon, which includes finishing all of the hard diaries, getting a quest cape, and maxing out a few more skills. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoy, and let's get started. Okay, we're starting this week off with our daily runecrafting training. Uh, there is 62 runecrafting. Now, uh, 65 is actually a requirement for a diary. However, if I do that diary last, I'm pretty sure I should be able to hit it without needing to ever train this dumb skill. Okay, so continuing on with my runecrafting training, let's go ahead and finish the Fremnic Diaries. We have a few tasks left on the Easy Diary, which would be a pretty decent runecrafting training method, and then we'll move on to the Mediums, which would be an even better rate. I'm very impressed I uh, never actually killed five rock crabs before. And there we go, we finished up the Easy Fremnic Diaries. Um, nothing too notable here. However, with that said, our goal for all of these is to get at least the Hard Diary done. We'll have access then to the Tan Leather spell and the Recharge Dragonstone maybe. Uh, but there's a nice 2.5k runecrafting experience. Okay, so now we're on to the mediums and we're back to these weird eagles that I literally have never ridden before and I don't really see how they're ever convenient. I don't think they are. Okay, there we go. That is the last diary requirement for the medium from Nick Diary. Definitely almost ran out of prayer running through the lighthouse, but uh, there we go, that is the mediums. Got the Fremenic Sea Boots 2 and another nice bit of runecrafting experience. Let's check that in there, 7.5k, right? Ah, beautiful, there we go. Now for the hard Fremenic Diaries, we need to do it Throne of the Miscellanea, which I really should have got around to doing a long time ago because I could put money in here and get passive income. Who doesn't want passive income nowadays? God damn it, this took me like two minutes to marry this girl. My GF speed run is now ruined. Okay, so I think the quickest way to gain favor in Miscellanea, or at least one of the quickest ways, is actually just to rake these two farming patches, wait for them to respawn, and or hop to a different world. And for the diary requirement, we do have to get 100% favor. While for the quest, I think we just need 75%. But I mean, we may as well do it at the same time. Okay, there we go. We got the hard diary requirement done. However, I think we are pretty much done the quest now anyway, so we'll go finish that up. Okay, there we go. One quest point and access to miscellanea, I guess, is the main reward. It feels like we're really close to our quest cape, but all of the remaining quests pretty much give one quest point, so we still have quite a few to go. Okay, this hard diary requirement is actually very challenging because this dwarf will not fuck off. <laughs> Luckily, I had some of these summer squirks left over from my thieving grind because the thieving level requirement is 75, but we can get a plus three boost from this, which we can hopefully just quickly do. There we go. God damn it. That took like five minutes. There we go. We have finished all of the hard tasks in the Fremenic region. Pretty easy to actually finish the diary, minus all of the quest and skill requirements, of course. But yeah, it was very quick. Now, besides the experience, the main reward here is access to, well, mainly the tan leather spell, which is something I've been actually dreaming about for a long time. So I'm kind of excited to try it out. Now, this spell is notably very good because it provides usually a very profitable money-making method while also training magic. If you're doing it at somewhat high efficiency, you can get around 130k XP per hour, which is good for magic training, especially considering that you often make upwards of 1 million GP in profit. Okay, now for the downside is it's kind of click intensive and requires a bit of inventory setup. Now I do have a couple of plugins running. I have the screen marker plugin, I have the inventory viewer plugin. And I have bank fillers everywhere in my bank. That way I know exactly where to click. When I click on the bank, it's already hovering over directly the deposit all button. Because my bank is full, it doesn't deposit the ruins. Like there is a way to set this up so it's pretty decent. So it's definitely a very good method on paper. It just kind of comes down to how much clicking you want to do. But still a very good unlock for my diary. And there it is, 63 room crafting. Only two more levels to go before I never trade in the skill again. Of course, until I need it for another diary requirement, I suppose. 
Okay, so the next diary I want to complete is the Kandran diary, and I'm impressed how little I have managed to complete of it, even just by accident. Uh, so we'll have to do a lot of tasks, but the main reward I'm looking for on the hard diary is so that you can redirect your Camelot teleport to the Sears Village Bank, uh, which really speeds up agility training when you're doing it at the Camelot course. Okay, there we go. We finished up the easy diaries. I tried to fill up this fishbowl like three times and for some reason failed, so I had to keep coming back. But there we go, there is the easy Kandarin diary completed and another 2.5k sweet runecrafting experience. Oh man, I forgot my water orb, that means I have to run all the way back through here again. This is a very strange shortcut, I don't really know who would ever need it, but you know what, it's kinda cool. Now, this is kind of embarrassing, but I guess you guys probably aren't even surprised at this point. I've never played Barbarian Assault. I've never needed the fighter torso because, you know what, I'm rolling in money. No, I've just been too lazy. Honestly, even if I had a ton of money, it's still kind of worth doing because, I mean, it's equivalent to something worth like 25 mil. Okay, there we go. We finished our very first wave, which is a medium diary requirement, but of course, I'm not going to leave. I'm not that type of person. We're, we're going to go ahead and do all 10 waves because, well, it's a requirement for the hard diary. Okay, so for a hard diary, I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. I need to go ahead and buy a granite body, I think. And yeah, there it is. Uh, we just need to buy it, and then I think we just need to equip it, and that is going to be a hard diary requirement out of the way. Yeah, it looks pretty trash, oh bad. Okay, for the medium diary, we're getting another uh, 7.5k runecrafting experience, and we're going to get 10% more marks of grace when we're doing the Sears Village rooftop course, but I think that's pretty much it. For some reason, one of the diary requirements is just to go rake somebody, so I just rake this guy's head. Now, luckily, for the diary requirement, you can actually get a plus 5 boost from an Admiral Pie, which means I don't need to go ahead and get 5 more fishing levels. That would have sucked. Whew. Maybe one day I'll get 99 fishing. On my RS3 account, I was very close. I was like 96. I don't know why I was going for fishing over something else. I don't know why this is a hard diary requirement. You literally just have to set your house to Fancy Stone. Hmm. Okay, maybe it doesn't count if it already is Fancy Stone. I don't know. Now one of the last things I need to do is kill a mythical dragon and then we're going to be pretty much done with the Kandarin Hard Diary. Now this isn't actually a diary requirement, but I forgot to mount my dig site earlier so I thought I would do it. Ooh, look how convenient that is. Ah right, I forgot about that. Definitely should have brought a water orb the first time. Okay, now this is it. With a Dwarven Stout matured, we're able to build the Adamant Spear and that is going to be it for the Hard Kandarin Diary. A really nice diary to get out of the way. So right now, when we go to Camelot, we only have one teleport option. It's going to bring us right in front of the castle. However, when we go ahead and complete the Kandarin Hard Diary, we now have the option to set it to the Sears Village Bank, which is more desirable in general. But mainly, you can teleport right to the beginning of the Sears Village agility course. Makes this really, really good. See, look, it's like literally right there, which will increase our experience rate at this course by, I think, maybe 20% or something. It's pretty significant. Okay, the next hard diary I'm going to do is the Karamja diary. Not particularly because there is a useful reward. It's just really easy experience. And uh, I already have all the requirements. I still can't believe to complete a medium diary, you need to spend like a mil on a goat tuber. That is a pretty annoying requirement, but whatever, we did it. Okay, for the medium diary, we're going to get another 7.5k runecrafting experience. No, we're not. 5k. Even Jagex knows how easy this one is. We are the winner of the fight pits. Pretty easy against a level 3. And I think we just need to drop this leaf and pick it back up a bunch. But there it is. There is the Karamja hard diary completed. I'm pretty sure doing all these diaries is still quicker XP than doing like nature runes. But there we go. 64 rune crafting. One more level to go. Then we'll have all of the diary requirements. Or at least the, all of the skill diary requirements. Hmm... Mage training arena, oh no. All right, so here is my very first Chambers of Zarek raid. I have never done this before, along with quite a few other things apparently. Now I have transferred over quite a bit of money from my main account and I may keep it here just to do raids because transferring it back and forth is a pain and you always end up losing money. Like I ended up merching myself for like five mil last time I transferred a bunch of items. I'll probably go in and explain it in my flipping video. Uh, but essentially I transferred over about 250 mil worth of stuff to buy mainly the Dragon Hunter Lance and a few other pretty important pieces of gear. No, this is not the minimum gear requirement for raids. I could have gotten away with less. However, I'm a complete noob. Uh, so I think having a bit of a leg up will definitely help out. A huge shout out to my IRL friend for 
teaching me this and suffering through a couple of brutally slow raids, I'm sure. All right, uh, well, <laughs> my first raid, about two hours, an hour 40 minutes. I didn't get anything first time, unfortunately. We finished it with literally one hit point. I was uh, flailing around like a madman, no idea what was going on, but I actually only died once in the raid, and that was to Ulm, so pretty good. That fight is definitely really chaotic, kind of overwhelming, but I mean, it should be getting better from here, I hope. Oh, well, there we go. Raid number two is only one hour, 17 minutes. That's already a pretty big reduction. About 180k in loot, not bad. My goal is to try to get a deathless raid within the first 10 raids. That would be pretty nice. Okay, raid number three, 52 minutes, and I didn't actually die to Ohm, although I did die during the raid, but uh, we finished with 14,000 points, which is, you know, that's okay. That's a pretty <laughs> 54k, okay. Now, one thing I've been putting off buying for a long time is rigor and we're finally going to get around to doing it as part of the money i transferred over i i just have to get rigor it's it's irresponsible not to have it considering how much more of an investment i put into the dragon hunter lands for example rigor is just so good and the only reason i haven't done it before is because it's a permanent unlock and i was just temporarily putting things over here okay so uh 58 minutes and this raid went a lot smoother there was a lot more stuff on the ground we're currently doing the suiciding method where we're going to suicide to Ohm once before we even get started. Apparently it's a pretty good learner's technique, but hopefully eventually we'll get to the point where I don't have to do that anymore. Okay, raid number five, we're up to one hour, two minutes. Hey, there we go, more runecrafting experience. Now, I haven't died to Ohm in quite a while, except for that really scuffed solo I tried earlier. But this time I died to Tecton, we're still looking for that deathless raid. This is looking pretty good guys, this is going to be it. 46 minutes too, that was much quicker than any of our other kills. 46 minutes is actually a pretty decent time, and I think anyway. On raid number 8, we got a deathless raid and about 40k points, so that's right on the mark. And I'm really stoked, this is a lot of fun honestly, and I mean I'm already close to half of the drop rate for a pretty significant drop. So yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. Okay, and to finish things off here, the very last diary I want to complete is the Falador diary because I pretty much have all the requirements. I think we now have enough gold nuggets. I only needed to go get another 20 or 30 because uh, for the Falador Diary, you do need the full Prospector's outfit, uh, which I mean will just be kind of nice to have anyway, but mainly for the diary. Now, one thing I really like about diaries is it kind of makes you finish a bunch of quests that you never do otherwise. For example, now I need to do Ichlothin's Little Helper. I need to do Rat Catchers and I need to do Grim Tales, which I don't think I've ever done on any account. Now, apparently, if you get this question wrong, this Sphinx will murder your cat, which would actually be really unfortunate because you'd have to regrow the entire thing. Luckily, we got quest guides. That is going to be Itchleton's A Little Helper completed. 4.5k Thieving Experience, 4k Agility, not too bad. Now, next up here, we have the Rat Catcher's Quest. Again, never done this one before. Hopefully, it's not too bad. That quest was awful. Actually, I think my least favorite quest might be the worst one in the entire game. And the icing on the cake is I got IP booted for hopping too many worlds to try to get through the stupid maze. And I couldn't log in for two hours. My god, I'm mad. And the very last quest I gotta do here is Grim Tales, which apparently is just the Jack and the Beanstalk story, somehow. <laughs> oh wow, that's actually a pretty good amount of experience. Not like that stupid Rat Catcher's quest. What the hell? Well, that's pretty much it for the Medium Diary. We're all done. I'll take another 7.5 thousand runecrafting experience, thank you. And that is it. We are done with all of the diaries I want to get done for now. Falador Hard Diary actually gives you the mole locator as, as well as the noted mole uniques. Something I might try out, although the Durakin method isn't going to be so good for me now because I already have max strength. But anyway, that is it guys. We finished, I think, two thirds of the Hard Diaries. All, however, that little mage training arena dot in there kind of messed up my plans and I decided I'd rather spend some more time raiding. Anyway guys, that is going to be it for today's episode, already getting pretty long. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you left a video a like, left a comment. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.